Hello, everybody. If this is your first time here, welcome. Today, we will be going over some of the bits and pieces that we are using inside of the vocal holders. And let's give you a little zoom in on this. If you don't know what this is about, uh, this is for the quantum resonance crystal beds, crystal lights, uh, things like that. And so this holder gets outfit with a rubber ring and then a crystal sits inside of it. And we have LEDs that wrap around the inside which are programmable and adjustable. Uh, we also are using a on this iteration, a full spectrum light, which is part UV and part infrared. Uh, the small colored chips inside here are actual different gemstones, because uh, those are holding frequencies that we can imbue into this holder. And there is also essential oils that are used in the infusion process of this. On the outside, there's these discs which are actual magnets. Now, I'm going to go and grab one of our molds. And so this is a 3D printed mold that we create. Um, put in the, the 3D printer. It's then smoothed with a special uh, mist that we put on it for a bit, and then it's dried for about a week. And then we can handle it. But um, these discs that are going through here, these are all magnets. So north, south, north, south, north, south. We oppose each magnet or alternate each magnet as it goes around, creating a stationary alternating magnetic field. Um, the premise behind this is that when we're putting the PEMF coil inside here, it's actually generating a alternating pulsed electromagnetic field that um, will create a sinusoidal waveform. And um, it's, it's really an incredible complex uh, waveform that's created. This is also another piece of element that goes into it. This is a tensor field coil. And you can look these up. Uh, they create scalar energy as well. So they sit in the bottom. And then we put our coil inside here. The LEDs and so on and so forth. So with this coil, we currently on this iteration have three continuous wraps going around it. And it's, off the top of my head, I'm going to say it's a Mobius coil. Uh, it's about 20 feet in length. And it's, it's basically one wire that starts on, uh, let's say, it starts on the left side of the camera, this wire, and then it works its way over to the right side. And then it comes back around. So we have one continuous loop of uh, wire. And then what happens is we take one end that's still looped and we wrap it around itself over and over and over again until it starts, until it terminates at the beginning. Uh, and so this creates a canceling waveform within the coil. And um, we're going to jump right into the experiments so you can see what's going on. Uh, real quick, we're going to go over uh, some of the, the cabling that's going on here. So we have the Vogel holder, and you know, there's some wired, extra wires hanging out of this, and that's for things like the LEDs and the other circuits in it. But uh, the one that we're hooked up to is a brown wire, and that's for that coil here. It's now 
going into this tangle of, of connectors, this big long one is for the oscilloscope that's on the screen. For the oscilloscope up here. And then there's another set of wires that are going to the signal generator. So that is a multifunction signal generator. And uh, let's see if we can get that stationary. All right. Oh my God, stop moving. So, real quick, we have this top box. This is channel one. This is going to our current project, the one that we just described. And there's a bottom screen here. That's channel two. And, um, Channel 1 and channel 2 right now are identical. So we have two channels that are identical. Now, if we look up on the oscilloscope, we will see that there's only one line. What we're going to do is turn on channel 2, which corresponds to this bottom one. Start the program up. And you can see now there's a purple line with the exact same waveform, it's just a little bit out of phase, meaning that its, it's wave is a little bit offset. So on the signal generator, we have, we have a cat bombing us right now. Hello, kitty. How are you? That's why your screen went blank. Um, come on, kitty. We have the bottom channel, channel 2, and channel 1 are exactly the same right now. They're both at 100 hertz. They're both putting out 5 volts of power. They both have 50% duty cycle. The only difference is this 000 at the bottom here, and this one's 180, that's the phase, meaning that's the reason why these are offset the way they are. Um, what we're going to do now is go into changing the voltage on both channels and we're already on channel one so we're going to start increasing the voltage oh my god cat people can't see what's going on this isn't working at all come on Get over here. Come on, Boo. Oh, just get out of the way. Okay, we're going to start that over. All right, so we're going to start playing around with the amplitude or how much power is being sent into the coil. And um, just really quick, this purple line that's going straight into the frequency generator into here so there's no coil or anything like that on it all the purple line is doing is measuring in a visual display of what the signal generator is doing on the lower channel and so we're using that as a reference point we're going to bump up the um, power on both these channels and we're going to see what's going on now it's a little hard to see right now, but the yellow line, channel 1, which is on the Vogel holder, is actually got a whole lot of noise uh, beyond the signal. And it'll become more apparent when we bump this up. So we're 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we'll stop at 12 volts. We're going to jump down to channel 2 and bring this up to 12 volts as well. So now both of these channels are at the same amount of power. But we can see channel 1. Channel 1 got really messy. And that has to do with the Mobius coil that's inside of the holder. Now we're going to go over and press Auto Setup, which automatically takes care of all the functions for us. So uh, we don't have to do any work there. Uh, so both the channels are showing right now, and 
we've got a frequency of 400 hertz kilohertz even though it's outputting 100 hertz with 2 volts and a peak of 3.5 volts so something's amiss what we're going to do now is go in and turn up the resolution on the screen so we can see better of what's going on Stop that. so we froze the frame um, the purple line again that is the bottom uh, frequency generator signal it's running perfectly it's at 12 volts it has a good clean signal but channel 1 we're going to take this one offline now channel 1 has got all sorts of stuff going on we're going to do an auto setup again and what happened there is we increased the resolution before we hit auto setup so it's giving us a really complex waveform. We're going to turn on channel 2 real quick. And you can see channel 2 is on the bottom. And we're going to zoom out and you're going to see a waveform created. So there's your waveform. This is exciting, so I'm going to get both these cameras in on the action. So we're going to increase the uh, resolution on this. We are going to hit roll, which makes the screen move really quickly. We're going to take line two off. So again, it's just the main one that we've been working with. And let's increase resolution on this and see what's going on. So there's a lot of A lot of information being sent right now and this is a scalar wave it's hard for us to even measure these things and uh, I'm not doing complete justice with it but you can see here we're almost at the highest resolution we can get it's like putting yourself under a mic microscope So I'm zooming out again. We're going to go way out until we see that wave. We're going to turn off the movement. We're going to hit auto setup again. Now let's see what happens when we increase the power a little bit more. We're at 12 volts. We're going to bring it up to 20 volts, which is the maximum that the signal generator can output. We're going to hit auto setup, which automatically again sets up the oscilloscope. And currently we're at 100 hertz, but the oscilloscope is bouncing around with uh, megahertz. And megahertz is a totally different frequency than Hertz. Uh, we're at 15 and I've also seen 13 in here. Um, here's 500 
kilohertz. So there's so many different complex frequencies going on. Um, now, we are going to, let's see if we can turn that off, we're going to zoom out a little bit, and what we're going to do now is take channel 2, and uh, we're on channel 2 now, we're going to turn it off, so it says off. So channel 2 is not outputting anything. So the oscilloscope's like, yep, nothing's on channel 2 right now. We are going to hook it up to another holder with a music player. And the music player is going to be playing some of our music the quantum resonance crystal fed stuff. So we have it playing uh, some of our earlier stuff, the beats. And let's go to auto setup. Again, channel 1 is just outputting a 100 hertz signal. We're going to turn that off. Actually, let's increase the resolution really quick and see what's going on. I am reversing the uh, music a little bit. it stop. So let me turn off channel one for a second. Here's channel two playing the music through the coil. And we hit auto setup again. And you can see how it immediately changes. Bring roll into play. So that waveform before was um, much more cohesive, and um, this has turned into a much more dynamic waveform with the coil in place. We're going to stop this for a second. These weird things, that's the scalar energy we think is being kicked out. These aberrations that show up. But in any event, that's what we have going on. Um, we have also done some experiments where uh, we've had the, uh, the coils hooked up to nothing at all, no power put on them, and they act as antennas. So we're going we're gonna to do a little experiment right now and see if we can get one of these to do that. Um, we just unplug the music from that channel that's currently on the display. And we are hooking the leads for that channel up to the raw coil. And, um, oh, actually, that's what we can do. We can do it to the... the channel one. So forgive me. 
I'm going to turn this one off, turn on channel 1, which is the old signal that we were playing with initially. So I'm unplugging those leads, and I'm hooking it up to that bare coil that we were just talking about. La 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 la. All right, and um, we just have that bare lead hooked up to the oscilloscope. And it's not powered to anything. Let's, let's back this out. So this terminal, this lead, this um, coil is hooked up to the oscilloscope and the oscilloscope only. And it's hooked up to channel 1. We're going to get any excess cables away from it. Well, it's doing something new that I haven't seen before. So this coil is not hooked up to anything. It's not hooked up to any power or anything like that. But it does have frequencies going through it and it is changing continuously. It's got 12 millivolts going through, which is almost nothing. And we'll see if it has any kind of... Oh, yeah. Just my hands holding onto it changes the waveform a little bit. There's um, the ghosting that shows up. I'll see if I can get this zoomed in so you can so see better. All I'm doing is rubbing my fingers like this on the coil. And the screen itself is showing that there's a whole lot of um, energy or voltage spikes going through it. So they do act as uh, antenna, which is why uh, we don't like to use Bluetooth or anything like that near these units, because they are picking up all the uh, information around them and sending it into the body, uh, which is where intention comes into play so much. Now. I can't get it to repeat what I did earlier today, which was when I was changing the frequencies on here, the antenna-like behavior was picking it up and displaying it on the um, oscilloscope because there was nothing plugged into it and it was just pulling up those frequencies out of the air, which was kind of fun. Uh, that is what I have today, and thanks for tuning in if you've listened to the end. Have yourselves a great day.